In this video, I'll go over how to migrate data between different Synology NAS devices using HDD migration. I'll also be referencing this Synology knowledge base article on migrating data between Synology NAS via HDD migration, which I'll link to in the description below. Let's get started and to begin, let's check out the environment section of the article to make sure everything is in place before doing the HDD migration. One item that the article strongly recommends doing, and I do as well, is to back up your data. You can follow this link which provides a table of items that you should back up, and from this list, I definitely recommend backing up your shared folders and selected packages, as well as your system's configurations. We'll do the system configurations backup later in the video, so you can skip that for now, but for your shared folders and selected packages, it's recommended that you use Hyper Backup to perform the backup, and I'll link to videos that I've created on using Hyper Backup that you can reference in the description below. The remaining items are less common, but if you do have packages that use license keys or are on DSM 6.2 or earlier and use PhotoStation blog posts, you'll want to backup that data as well. The next thing to make sure of when migrating data between different Synology NAS models is that the drives that are used in the source NAS are also compatible with the destination NAS. In my case, I'm migrating from a DS220 Plus to a DS224 Plus, which are very similar systems, so I know the hard drives are compatible. The next thing that is relevant to my setup is that I have access to the source NAS. Both NAS systems are plugged in and are on the same network, and the destination NAS is turned off. The remaining items under the environment section don't apply to my setup, but make sure to read through the section, and if any of the items apply to you, make sure to address those items as well. When you're ready to move on, click on Resolution and read through the Migrate Between Different Synology NAS Model section, then follow along with the rest of the video. Here I'm logged into the source NAS, and I'll bring up Control Panel, select Update and Restore, and I'll make sure that the DSM version that I'm running is the latest one, which it is in my case. You'll want to update your version of DSM if you have an update that is available. Next, I'll select Configuration Backup, click on the Export button, and click OK on this Configuration Backup window to do a manual export of my system's configuration. I also need to click Allow in my browser to download the backup file that was generated. Now I'll shut down the source NAS, remove its drives, install the drives in the same order in the destination NAS, turn it on, and wait for the beep to indicate that it has booted up successfully. At this point, I'll bring up my web browser, go to find.synology.com, which searches for Synology devices on my network, and in my case, it did find the destination DS224+. It also has a status of migratable, which is what I want to see. If, however, you get a message that states that all data on your hard drives will be deleted, you'll want to close your browser, long press the power button on your NAS to power it off, redo the order of the drives to make sure that they are installed in the same order that they were installed in the source NAS, and try the installation again. For my setup, I'll continue by clicking Connect, agree to the end user license agreement, click Continue on this Synology privacy statement, and click Migrate on this Welcome Back window, which recognizes that I'm moving the hard drives from my DS220 Plus to this DS224 Plus. From this Select Installation Method window, I want to retain system configurations, so I'll click Next then click Next once again to install Disk Station Manager. I'll let the installation complete, and when done, I'll be at the DSM login screen where I can log in with the normal admin username and password that I've been using. Now I'll bring up Control Panel, select Update and Restore, then click Configuration Backup, and click Restore. From this Restore Configuration, select Source Window, I'll select the configuration backup file I downloaded earlier, upload the file to the NAS, and click Next. I'll select the option to restore 
All System Configurations, click Done, then click Yes on this pop-up warning window, which starts the restore process. Once done, you can click OK on this window, confirming that system configurations are restored. At this point, the migration is done, and the system has been restored, and for the most part, the NAS is ready to use. There may be a few other things that need your attention, and I'll go over what I wanted and needed to do in my setup, but this may or may not be relevant to you. One thing I wanted to do is rename the NAS, and I did that by going to Control Panel, then Network. Under Server Name, I changed the name to DS224, clicked Apply, and OK on this pop-up window wanting to refresh the page. Next, I found that the DDNS setup through Synology's DDNS service wasn't working properly, and I was unable to register the hostname I had set up. To resolve this, I needed to SSH into my Synology NAS. Then I ran this command to get the current cloud application key. I then backed up the key using this move command. Then I ran the original command again and added the dash F option to generate a new cloud key. Now, back in DSM, I'll bring up the Synology account control panel and sign in with my Synology account. I'll then go back to external access, select DDNS, edit the Synology DDNS listing, and I tried the test connection button once again, which still failed. What I then found is if I disable DDNS, I got this pop-up window asking if I want to transfer the DDNS hostname to this NAS. I clicked yes, re-enabled Synology's DDNS, and at this point I got a status of normal. The last service that I found that was not running properly were my VMs under a virtual machine manager, which failed to start because there was no corresponding networking on the host. This was fixed by selecting Network. Then under Action, I clicked Edit and enabled LAN 1, which is the LAN port I have enabled on the NAS. Now I was able to power on the VM that couldn't start up properly. At this point, the migration to my new Synology NAS was complete, and hopefully you have similar success in your HDD migration. Also, you may want to check out my other Synology NAS migration videos as well. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project you are working on, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.